If you have a Bible, would you um, turn it on or turn to page whatever um, where you will find Matthew chapter 6? Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 9. You don't really need to turn to it. It's pretty much the best known passage in the whole of the Bible. If you went to school, then you'll know it. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I'm not going to speak long today. I know, you guys kill me. As I said, we're going to share communion together in a little moment. I want to make time for that, but before we do, I just want to talk to you about the word I mentioned earlier that has kind of ended up being the theme for this morning, and that word is family. Uh, I'm excited that on a Sunday where we've just baptized a little one, and where we're sharing communion together, and when we'll soon be welcoming people through the doors for our one-to-one lunch, that we're thinking about family. As I said earlier, we're going through a few weeks of looking at our vision here at St. Philip's. Our vision is to pursue God until heaven overflows through us. Our primary goal is to go after God, to get to know Him, to get to be loved by Him, understand what that means, just to make Him the main thing, nothing else. But in so doing, we know that everything that He wants for our lives flows from that place that place of knowing him. And last week I mentioned how our vision is supported by three words that start with B. They are behold, belong, and become. Last week I talked about behold. They kind of work in that order, right? So the behold is the focus on God, to experience him, to grow in intimacy, to make his presence the main thing, because we know that that's his main thing. His desire is for us to encounter Him and for Him to encounter us. He wants to be present with us. Therefore, there's no higher goal. There's nothing of greater value. There is no suitable substitute for the actual, felt, glorious presence of God. But the journey that our vision encapsulates is also very much about belonging and becoming. And I'm going to talk about becoming next week today just on belonging. That's what I want to focus on. And under the word belong, our vision says this, we are family, beloved children of God, adopted by our Father in heaven, brothers and sisters in Christ, sure of our identity, bound together by love, growing in fellowship. We believe that the kingdom advances through family And that Jesus will be known and honored by our love for each other and for our community. I want to focus on just one little phrase in that paragraph, which is that the kingdom advances through family. It seems to me that um, lots of people think that being a Christian is about going to church. It isn't. It's about being a child. Being a child of God, it's not just a comforting little idea that we teach the kids in the kids group. Family is actually completely core to the kingdom of God, and it all rests on his identity as father and our identity as his kids. Lots of my mates who um, aren't Christians but know that I'm a vicar, they always say, um, oh yeah, Paul, he's really religious. And I always pull them up on that. I'm like, guys, I'm not religious. (laughs) Because I'm not into religion. I'm into relationship. The kingdom of God, the good news of Jesus, the story of the cross is all about relationship. It's not about rules. It's about love. And God has revealed himself to us as a father and put the word Abba on our hearts. And Abba means daddy. Daddy. So we get to call the creator of the universe, not just father, but daddy. 
Listen to how scripture reveals the father heart of God. Psalm 103. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who love him. Matthew chapter 7. Though you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? 1 John 3, my favorite. See what great love the father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. For that, it says, is who we are. So forget the notion, if you have it, of an old bloke sitting on a cloud, slightly grumpy with a long beard, preoccupied with punishment. That is a human misunderstanding of who God has revealed himself to be. Instead, grab the revelation of who he actually is. He doesn't live on a cloud. He lives in you. He's not far off. The Bible says he's closer than our breath. He's not grumpy. He's in a permanently good mood. He's not an old man. He's your ageless father. He's not preoccupied with punishment. He's overflowing with tenderness, mercy, grace, and love. And most importantly of all, get the revelation that he actually likes you. He likes hanging out with you. He delights in you. He takes pleasure in you. The Bible says you're the apple of his eye. That's why I'm so excited about his presence. It's the ultimate manifestation of a father's love for us. He actually wants to be with us. Read Genesis 1. And why does he want to be with us? Because we are his beloved kids. That's the core of our identity. It's what releases us into our destiny, God's purpose for our life. Abba means daddy. Only a beloved child gets to call their father daddy. I don't want to downplay uh, the reality that the cross defeated, right? We were all sinners in need of a savior. But I am saying that your identity is not sinner, it's son. God gave his son to make us sons and daughters. Being a Christian is not about church, it's about being a child. Our reading today, so familiar. It's so familiar, I thought to myself, Father, why have you given me that passage? It's hardly worth preaching on, everyone knows it. But this morning, as we just remind ourselves of the words of the Lord's Prayer, I want you to look with fresh eyes on one word, the very first word, our. You can't understand God as Father without also understanding that we are siblings. He's not just my father, he's yours, which means that the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, that prayer actually reflects the father's heart, and it starts with the revelation that we are family. It doesn't say my father, it says our father. We pray it together as family. And then the prayer continues, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We've looked at that loads over the last few years. It's our calling to partner with God's desire that heaven comes to earth. It's not a place you go when you die. It's what he wants to manifest on earth now. That's the prayer he put on our hearts. It's the whole vision of here to go after God so much that heaven overflows through our lives into our families, our social networks, the community around us, the city of Bath, and further afield. God wants his goodness to manifest on earth, but what this prayer hardwires into the Christian life is that that prayer of his heart is all about family. It's the prayer that he put on our lips, the commission on our lives. The context is that he is our father and we are his kids. So simple. This prayer teaches us that the kingdom advances. What I mean by that is that God's plan and purpose for the world, his rule and reign, his love for the world, his great desire that everyone should know him and be set free from all the rubbish in their lives, that kingdom advances through family. That's how he always intended it. 
And it's the golden thread throughout Scripture. Genesis 1, God delights in Adam and Eve and tells them, be fruitful and multiply. That is not a command to fill an empty world. It's an invitation to start a family. His plan from the start was that it should advance through family, through relationship, through love. Genesis 12, God promises to bless Abraham and his descendants, his family. God's people were to be blessed so that they'd be a blessing. His kingdom was going to come to pass through family. But God's family isn't limited to biology. It's constituted through the Spirit. His very presence in us. Matthew 12, Jesus says, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And then he points not to his biological family, but to his disciples. He's reframing family, and he's opening the way for the spirit, who in Romans 8, Paul tells us, is the spirit of adoption, by which we are able to say God is daddy, Abba. And then as Jesus is about to go through the whole cross for us, the pain and the agony of that, the separation of that, he gives his disciples a new command in John 13, and he tells them to love one another. And he says it's by our love for each other that the world will know him. Which means that when we don't love each other, we're kind of breaking his heart. And in Acts 2, we see what happens when God's family receive the spirit of adoption and walk in the way of love. It says that the fledgling church, this church was only weeks old. They received the Holy Spirit, and it says they end up devoting themselves to Jesus and to each other, eating together, praying together, looking after each other's needs, loving one another, and living a life full of miracles, supernatural power, signs and wonders, and literally thousands coming to faith in Jesus. Thousands joining the family because the kingdom advances through family. And so our vision here at St. Philip's is inspired by the same Holy Spirit by whom we all get to say God is our daddy. It's the Father's love for us that inspired our 22 initiative through which we are seeking to love our neighbors in this community. Started in lockdown, emergency food parcels, food being delivered to people's homes, cooked meals, all of the stuff we did in lockdown under Matt 22 flows from the Father's love. It's the Father's love that is inspiring Andy and Suzanne in the kitchen right now to cook meals for those who would otherwise be eating alone and who will be joining us very soon. The dream is that when they come into this building, they'd feel the family. It's the Father's love that inspires Linda Wills to organize outings for our precious older generation, just so that they can love each other, look after each other. Chris White, who feels called to disciple and honor that generation. It's the Father's love that compels Vicky and Rach and Dave as they lead our youth, and Joe and Debs, Jules, and the Eldridges and all the other amazing people on our kids' team to pour the love of Jesus into the next generation so that they would grow up knowing that they're not just children, they're children of God. It's family. And it's the Father's love that has inspired us to reboot our vision for house groups for this coming year. Just before the summer, I spent four weeks with the house group leaders in this church. If you're not a member of this church, there are um, house groups in this church where people meet during the week to gather together to get discipled and loved and be family together. And what we're going to do is we're going to move house groups to the center of life at St. Philip's. They're going to be our discipleship program from now on. And we're going to change their name from house groups to home groups. Why? Because home is about family and welcome. We don't have a welcome team here. We've got a home team because we want people to feel like they're coming home when they come in our doors, like they're part of a family where they're going to be loved. So the plan for home groups going forward is that we really invest in those communities. I'm really excited that a couple of weeks ago or months ago, or I don't know, actually I have no idea when it was, but 
everybody filled out a form, do you remember? Tick boxes about how they'd like to get involved and all that kind of stuff. And there's 16 people waiting for me to get back to them who want to get plugged into a home group. That's really exciting, and I'll be in touch soon. Jules and I ran a home group for 15 years in London in our last church, and it became the epicenter of all that God was doing in our lives. The last time I counted, 72 children were born into our home group over those 15 years. We've celebrated marriages together. We've supported each other when tragically marriages broke down. We've gone to housewarming parties together, and we've looked after each other when people were made homeless. We've gone through thick and thin. It became the community in which we grew in our spiritual gifts, in our love for the Word, our love for Jesus. It was incredible. I know no other better place in terms of discipleship and church context than a home group for growing in intimacy with God and intimacy with each other. So I'm so excited to plug those 16 people into a home group over the next month or so as we just work out what the shape of it's going to be. Why? Because we want you to be embedded in family so that you can walk in your identity as God's beloved. The kingdom advances through family. How well we love each other is literally the marker of whether God gets his wish from his kids or not. That heaven manifests on earth that we would all know his precious son and encounter his love for us. Being a Christian is not about going to church. It's about being a child. I just love that we had the privilege of baptizing little Toby this morning on this very Sunday when we're thinking about family. Remember the words that we spoke over him at the end of that time of baptism. I said God has received you by baptism into his church. And you guys said, we welcome you into the Lord's family. We are members together of the body of Christ. That's the church. We are children of the same heavenly father. We are inheritors together of the kingdom of God. We welcome you. And so we're delighted to welcome Toby Claire and James, and all of you guys who are with us today, you're welcome anytime. So as we go on this journey together of discovering what it looks like to pursue God until his kingdom actually starts to manifest through us, let's remember that we do so as family. For his is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.